Another tragic night, fueled by Old Crow and 1970s two-tone. I awoke in a municipal parking lot, staring into the eyes of the 1911's little boohoo brother. I knew the damn bastards had an in for me. They're trying to get me to compromise my principles with this ruthless kraut. Kraut? No. No, it's a term of endearment. My family can be traced back to northern Deutschland. That's not the point. The point is that a Porsche came and is not for the proletariat. Prostituting ad men, perhaps, but not journalists. You understand? It's had to be a trick. The door was wide open, and my contact was surprisingly magnanimous. Just drive it, he says, as if he was offering me a huffy mountain bike. This was a trick. And even if it wasn't, I had to know. I had to know the truth. Where's the engine, I demanded. You can't see it. And what sort of honest two-seater would hide its soul? Tools, we need tools, and mechanical and philosophical instruments. My contact was, again, accommodating, pulling back the Cayman's bush. No, 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 they expected this move. Or he expected this move. We've come this far, no turning back now. I snatched the star driver from my contact's hands. Time was precious, and this hot Autobahn burner was drawing a crowd. And the last thing I needed was ass-scratching Loki loods. Peter, ha! This Cayman is moved by a 2.7 liter flat six naturally aspirated shoebox making 245 horsepower. Ah! No indication at all what these components do. Where are the cylinder heads? No leads. What are these tubes? No labels. Unmarked hoses for piping vaporized ebogaine into the passenger cabin. Nope. No. Close the cow. Nothing. I want nothing. My lungs heave to expel this Cayman's poison. My contact explained that the Cayman's catalytic converter is so thorough that it makes meeting your maker in an Altoona storage unit an impossible task. I made a note of that and plan to test his theory to the fullest. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. I told this to my contact. He didn't understand. Never mind. It was time for a drive. Long slip linkages and tiny half shafts and all. No sense hanging around this parking lot, I thought. We were, of course, the absolute cream of the automotive press. Forge when the world was young. Yes, sir. We belong behind the wheel. All automobiles tell stories, that's for damn sure. They have their narratives and peaks and valleys and orgasms and crying fits at the parts counter. And they also have audiences and onlookers, even if these people are merely sidewalk spectators. And sitting in this Teutonic gurney filled me with rotten envy. I wanted to piss all over its carefully stitched leather seats. I wanted to extinguish a thousand Paul Malls on its tasteful dash and use spent spark plugs to raggedly carve the words, the only war worth fighting is a class war, into this Cayman's sparkling multi-layer paint. Anything to remind the owner exactly where he stands among the order of things. But if I was to see this assignment to completion, I need to win my contact's friendship. It was only reasonable. So, Let's get down to brass tacks. Yes, the Porsche Cayman is a fine machine. It will excite you. In the same way an experienced madam can use ring pliers in a manner congruent to their original purpose. This Cayman's 245 horsepower puts the car mid-shelf between the Boxer and the 911. This Cayman shares a number of body components with a bargain Boxster as well. Five weeks prior, a snaggletooth hair gel crook near Spatz Airfield told me that the rear hatch of the Cayman made it the most practical two-seater you could buy. The Swindler's Park City jewelry kiosk Rolex revealed his place in nature's hierarchy. Could that seersucker know that the brakes on the Cayman are smaller than those on the Cayman S? Or that the Cayman S has 295 horsepower, while this base Cayman has 245. I pressed the bastard, and he waved an accompanying Cayman S in the showroom. He was lying to me. That machine was a siren only wearing Cayman S's wheels as an option. Yes, yes, you can do that. There is no room for trust in this rotten year of our Lord, 2013. The Cayman doesn't have a dipstick. Put your faith in the computer, they said. I did that once, and it led to an OK Cupid date with a pre-op at New Hope. We went bowling. My contact directed me to the Cayman's roof line, where tricky dollhouse doors hide mounting points for roof racks and topside ordnance. What kind of Aspen ski poser would latch a ski rack to the top of their Porsche and pretends it's a slubby Jeep Liberty? The hubris it would take to pass oneself off as rugged in this scalpel of a machine. But what else could Porsche do but double cast the Cayman as both Prince and Popper? Why do that? The Cayman fell victim to the gross lassitude of the bursting mid 2000s real estate bubble. Style and refinement had to dress in Carhartts, no matter how contrived. It was not fashionable to be rich in those days, and the Porsche emblem looked yuppier than the embroidered crest upon a spectator's polo shirt at the America's Cup. In 2007, mustachioed men were constantly jacking off and crying at computer printout images of Joe the Plumber. Financially comfortable members of society became villains. The new hero for 2007 was an uncircumcised rapist with two estranged wives. Lives, six dirt-faced children sucking on the teat of social services and a sideswipe Chevy Blazer parked outside Ollie's with a bad tags. No room at all for nicely weighted steering wheels and creature comforts in that world, or this one for that matter. Like it or not, I could never drive this exciting machine to any of my favorite bars. As this assignment dragged on, I tried to keep a clear head, but all I could think about while driving this Cayman is a lonely feeling of exclusivity, and it never left. Even when I felt that rearward flat six obediently push me along with Meridian Bank Assurance, drinking nothing but the finest 93 octane. There is an unspoken agreement between you and the machine. This Cayman will corner like a slot car and obey every vice in your rice foot. And in exchange, you will clean up your vocabulary, buy Girl Scout cookies, and drop $10 in the collection plate. Tuck in your shirt and smile for the speed camera, because every wrathful cop with a lesbian daughter is having a bad day and looking for someone to blame. Oh, this is how it started last time. Uh, 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 no, wait. Uh, I think I can. Uh, uh, wait, my head. Uh, uh.
There we go. I'm inside. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable. Let me see if oh, I can't reach it. Oh, it's a fault in the design. If I if I'm in the wrong way, I can't squeeze around and reach the handle. It's getting hot. Ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>